this is a dial ball gauge, if you've never seen one before, and this is for measuring um, cylinders. So basically, you have replaceable tips for different bore diameters, this goes all the way up to 100 millimeters, and then you have a plunger on the side with these guide wheels that can move because of the curve of the cylinder. Don't ever trust these because they're rubbish, even the really good ones, you have to use a micrometer to um, measure the clearance on the end. So what we're running at right now is around about a hundred and seventy one five six seven eight and nearly a half. So seventy eight and a half and the service limit is seventy eight point one. So we should get a reading and if I turn it this way you can kind of see what I'm doing. So you've got to lead it in. So we know that this, I'll just get my guesstimators out just to make sure, I'll start that again because I've just knocked it. So that was this moving the needle ever so slightly and these increments are increments of 10 microns so this scale for the micrometer and this are the same. So anything that this um, reads here needs to be taken away from 78.4 but that we get we need to subtract from 78.41 so at the top of the bar here and what you're looking for is you'll see the needle dance around and what we're looking for is when the needle goes to its highest point so there is 37 that's 37 so if we minus uh, 37 from this we'll end up with 4 so it's 38.4 0.04 sorry which is below the service limit so the service limit is 78.1 millimeters and that's service limit so there's your surface the uh, service limit 78 we just go down to the bottom Thirty-five, thirty-five point eight, something like that. Like I say, all these numbers need to be minus. So what you can do is you can make a chart up, and we'll do this properly when we actually measure all these cylinders because we're going to take loads and loads of measurements of these cylinders. But what that tells me right now is that the pist um, the cylinders um, will need some work. They are slightly sloppy. So we take our piston, and which piston's which? doesn't matter, we're only doing the preliminary. So the piston limit on this piece of paper is 77.86, so 77.86, which we just do with a micrometer. So 77.86, and you measure it here at the bottom of the crown, at the bottom of the crown, bottom of the skirt, sorry. So if we get my micrometer and unlock it, all the best ways to do it, like so. I don't know if you can see this, sorry I'm a bit of an idiot. So all I've done is turn my piston upside down like so. Oh bloody finger in the hole. Good and holes are good. So you'll try and keep it parallel. This is why you move around. Is that ratchet not working? So now we've got it pretty much where we want it, we'll make sure we can just, like I say, just like before, rock it. It should just touch to the point where it's grabbing. That's 76, 7, 
7.98 so that's 77.98 let's check this one out this is the rusty horrible garbage one well I don't expect it to be 77.99 so that's not that, that's cool these pistons are not in bad shape like I say we'll measure the cylinders again properly could these be replacements? God knows. But if I had an oil issue, like you can see all the burnt oil everywhere, the rings might have chewed into the actual cylinder. But the piston skirts, I was surprised actually. But there's been little slapping, it's just all right. Oh, so there's a few other um, <coughs> checks, preliminary checks that I want to do. And one of them is the wrist pin, cudgel pin. Now, I don't know if you can see this that well, but there are some scar marks here, but there's a nice little groove here at this end, I can feel. Not so much there, there's scar marks in the middle, which there shouldn't be. Yeah. So that's my connect with 20.99. For some strange reason. So I don't have um, inside my micrometer. Um, my chrome is small enough to do the inside of here, and this is my connect with 20.97, so that pin can't be 20.99. But then they're guesstimators. There's a tiny bit of rock in there, there's enough clearance in there. As for inside the piston. Oh, that's the ring on that side. Yeah, there's enough in there. So they're all good. It's not excessive wear, etc. Um, now, I'm going to do something a tiny bit different. And this will come apparent. So I've shifted everything out of the way. Ooh, I don't know that is. So clean up just the uh, bearing surfaces with our wonderfully expensive kitchen roll. Um, let this be water. <laughs> so what I like to do is we're not going to touch this for a while. We've got a lot to do to the engine. So I'm just getting rid of any water to a certain degree that may have condensed on the, um, what is it, actually on the crankshaft to get my finger, some nice heavyweight engine oil, just put that on there, run out of oil. Last of the factory fill it and then literally just give, especially the bearing surfaces, that's what you want to pay absolute attention to. So put that to one side, and then I get grease, and this can be general purpose, whatever grease, just like that. And what I want to do is I want to cover the bearing surfaces. So we're already covered in oil and the grease is just going to um, just help it run off, uh, stop it from running off because I don't know, it shouldn't be, we shouldn't be tucking this thing away forever but just in case. So the grease on the bearing surfaces like so, on the splines the webs don't really need it, maybe the ball bearings do. And we'll talk about these ball bearings that are in the crankshaft and when we go on to our oil galleries and stuff like that, because that's what it's got to do with. I'll clean this shite off my fingers. Although I do like grease, it's a moisturiser for men. Not that we use such things. Like so. Back on. Wonderful, wonderful clean film. 
go down to the local cash and carry card or Tesco's, wherever, or Arbor Freight, or wherever you go in America, and absolutely cover the crank up. This bloody clean comes with a pain in the ass. I would say it's wonderful, but it's nice to have made And then this can get put in one of, our, one of my storage boxes. And then uh, keep, keep it protected. from that horrible stuff called oxygen. If only we didn't need it. Right. So don't have to be anything wonderful. There you go, it just stops any what it does is we've already the problem is is we if you can vacuum bag stuff, go for it. Vacuum bagging engine parts is is a brilliant idea and I'm gonna have to get some myself some of them sealing bags that you just stick a vacuum cleaner on. But that is just gonna stop any real excess extra oxygen or moisture getting in there and the grease is literally going to that's your, your actual barrier. So I'll put that to one side for a minute. Drop kind of in there. So